The Whips have agreed that the next debate will be on the item 17, the motion on primary school places. Can the Council note that I have agreed requests that Councillors Mrs Tracy and Councillors Osborne uh, be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes on this motion. So I now call upon Councillor Osborne to move and seconded by Councillor Gibbons. Uh, I'd like to move it formally, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And seconded by somebody. Would that one of your... Second it. Thank you. Right, so Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to start actually with, not with my words, but some other words uh, on this subject. Think Tank London Council predicts a total shortfall of 110,000 permanent primary school places by 2016. The preferred solution of Secretary of State Michael Gove is free schools, yet they do very little to increase the number of places. Free schools are not necessarily started where they're needed most, nor do they create enough new primary places. For that, local authorities have to be able to expand existing schools, even though with additional funds that is often difficult given space constraints and high land prices. What is clear, this is too important and uh, urgent a problem for anybody to play politics with. Providing children with a good start in their schooling is vital, a minimum for any school system. And yet, of the new free schools opening in London, just 16 are primaries. That's not some left-wing track. That's the evening standard, which everybody knows is a right-wing rag. <laughs> um, the fact is that uh, we're back round to... Uh, uh, back to the future. In the year 2000, if we were to travel back then, we would have Councillor Grimston closing down Ethelberger School, and we would be sitting in a committee room, and we would be asking, as parents did again and again, are you sure the figures are right here? Isn't it possible that in the future we may need actually more primary school places? And Councillor Grimstone answers, the fact is, the most difficult thing to predict is the future. If we were to get into the DeLorean of time and move forward now, we would be in exactly that position. And the fact is that we predicted the future and Councillor Grimstone didn't. What Marty McFly would find is not merely hoverboards, but a shortage of primary school places. Now, the problem is that Mr Gove has played politics with the primary school places. And instead of looking at the quickest way to get primary places opened up and solve the crisis. He's actually used the situation to push his free schools agenda, a political agenda, at the expense of children's education, quite typical of him, by banning councils from opening schools. And that's why we only have 16 new primaries across London. Now, we're opening new schools again. Um, Okay, the government bears the cost, but the fact is that it's not a particularly efficient way of spending money, closing and then opening them up. But let's have a look at what's proposed. Well, we have some new free schools, and in fact, uh, Labour councillors in Gravenie supported the establishment of the uh, new Gravenie free school there. Um, we have free schools set to open in Putney, and we have schools which are dependent upon developers getting on with the job and developing um, in Springfield and in the Nine Elms area. And we may be able uh, to open a new school in the Atheldean area, which um, would then we would have to interview through a quite long and lengthy process and try and find a provider for because of the nature of the ban on councils opening schools. Now the fact is that our other option, which we're using quite heavily, is to open up new primary schools um, by expanding existing stock. Parents have, are not keen on this, um, at Hillbrook, 63% of parents disagreed with this. Broadwater, a massive 93. All Farthing and Sherringdale, 59 and 55 against. Uh, it was only Albemarle and Granard where the f parents really supported the idea of expanding the school to any great extent. Um, we, we, we need to be concerned about overexpansion of schools. Uh, for example, Belleville, our biggest school, 750 pupils, is actually just on two sites. Hillbrook will be up to 800 on a single site. That is why we're calling for um, the council to bring forward a report on this. So what do we actually want? Well, Wandsworth is an excellent local authority. Ofsted tells us so. So what's wrong with us building and running schools? And let's make sure we don't build mega primaries as a quick fix. Let's make our schools child-sized. Let's tell Michael Gove that the opening um, 
the primary school places is far too serious to be determined simply by his political dogma. And the fact is, if you don't actually vote for our motion, you're effectively saying that your own local education authority is not up to the task of running schools. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dawson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my fears that the motion was riddled with some of the oldest of old Labour dogma has rather been reinforced by the opening speech this evening. Um, obviously, as the leader of the Labour Party nationally seeks to um, grapple with their stranglehold of the paymasters, still are the ones with Labour Group, the spokesman for the teaching union, still seems to hold sway. Um, my colleagues during the course of this debate um, will cover the effective management of the school sites and the school estates um, over many years here in Wandsworth. Uh, remember, they are publicly owned and therefore we are accountable to ratepayers and residents for the effective management and use of those sites over the long term. And also the relentless drive to support Wandsworth schools um, as they sought to improve standards and achievements since they were freed by a Conservative government some 20 years ago from the tyranny of Ilia. I would personally like to cover a couple of issues, including the question of four form entry primary schools. But first, however, Michael Gove's reforms to the education system. Reforms that, in my opinion, are testimony to the determination of uh, this Conservative-led administration to bring about lasting change that will give our children and grandchildren the opportunity not only to complete, compete in the global economy, but also to realize their dreams and aspirations. And I think that is a noble ambition which Wandsworth Conservative Group wholeheartedly supports. This council has responded in a practical and imaginative way to the free school and academy agenda by setting up a commission chaired by the indefatigable Baroness Pauline Perry um, and in passing, actually, I would thank Labour councillors who've made um, a contribution and uh, worked with us on that commission. Um, a commission which has been highlighted by ministers, the LGA, London councils, and the Mayor of Tim. London responsible way of engaging uh, with the government reforms. And in particular, it's enabled us to work with the providers of the free, three free schools uh, that are opening as primary schools in the borough later this year. Therefore, I believe that our message to Michael Gove is not to rethink the national policy on free schools, as the motion proposes, but our message is to stay the course and, in fact, to look for even more imaginative ways of promoting the academy and free school movement, not because it undermines a well-established, high-performing local education authority, because it complements such a high-performing local education authority, and we will all benefit from that choice and diversity. And if I may quote from the supporters of one of these free school proposals, which in fact relates to the sixth form, and that is the sponsorship by Westminster School and Harris Federation, it's a quote which says, this is an immensely exciting and important venture. This sixth form is likely to be hugely popular and a brilliant success. This is a free school. And that quote is from Lord Adonis, uh, Labour's school minister from 2005 to 2008. It's clear support and is in welcome contrast to the musing of Labour's shadow education secretary um, when really, when is a free school not a free school? It's when Stephen Twigg is trying to appease the uh, teaching unions. Turning very briefly, if I may, to the four-form entry primary school, implying they're a problem. Leading any school, of course, is a challenge. Um, but good leaders don't just manage a school, they inspire a school. And educational research, whether by Ofsted or the National College, repeatedly finds that school leadership, ethos, and the quality of teaching and learning are what determines the success of a school, not the size of the school. Though, in fact, there is some research which casts doubt on really the long-term viability of one-form entry schools. Belleville School in Battersea has successfully expanded to four, four forms of entry. It remains an excellent school, providing great education for more children. As well as the expansion, the school has become a teaching school, which requires outstanding leadership and outreach capacity. 
and it's been able to develop this ability to work with other schools, but also to provide more career paths and opportunities for its own staff. It has been a success and is welcomed, and I believe Hillbrook will be in exactly the same position as it expands to full form, providing a good education for more children. So in conclusion, Madam Mayor, Wandsworth's approach to education for more than 20 years has delivered an improving education for the borough's young people. People of all parties and none know this and support us. It is the Labour Group and the Wandsworth Against Everything and Anything Alliance um, that are on the wrong side of history. And therefore, in urging my colleagues to reject this motion this evening, I'm confident that we speak for our residents and the families of Wandsworth. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Mayor. I, I would actually like to congratulate the Labour Party for uh, bringing this wide-ranging motion. I think 25 years on after the abolition of the In London Education Authority, it's all too easy for us to forget just what a state education was in uh, in 1990 in this borough, with something very close to 40% of our primary school places empty, with a vast amount of education resource sim simply being spent on keeping these half-empty buildings half-decent, because that's all they were, uh, rather than on actually educating uh, youngsters. Uh, and uh, as, as the schools gradually came out from under that dark, dank uh, shadow of, of the ILEA, o welke lust in, in, in freie Luft dem uh, Atem Lies zu Eben, as, as uh, Councillor Mrs Howlett would doubtless have at least heard someone sing when she was on the stage at some point, and into the light that we as, a, as an authority have been able to uh, offer them, it's no surprise that as we eliminated that vast waste of resources on uh, non-education and focused it instead on education, on teachers, on resources, on materials, we started to see not only educational standards rise, but of course people wanting to use our schools. I wonder what Councillor, uh, former Councillor Sir Edward Lister or, or indeed Councillor Mrs Howlett would have given to be coming into this chamber in the early 90s to have a debate about the challenges of a series of extremely successful outstanding schools that all our residents wanted to use rather than the challenges of a serious schools that our residents, certainly those who could afford to, would do almost anything to avoid. Now, Councillor uh, Gibbons refers quite rightly that in my patch as, uh, as Education Chair, we closed uh, Joseph Tritton, we closed Ethel Berger, we closed John Milton, uh, schools which are in Latchmere, or would have been in Latchmere, uh, uh, in St Mary Park and uh, in Queenstown. And at the moment, we have a severe pressure of places in West Putney, in Southfields and Thamesfield. So if I understand the Labour Party's version of a strategy, it is that to prevent a four-year-old in Southfields from having to have a long car journey to a place, they would have kept provision available in Queenstown. If they want to prevent a young five-year-old in West Putney from having to take several bus journeys to a place, they'd have been uh, providing extra places in St Mary Park. Uh, if they'd wanted to make sure that a youngster in Thamesfield, a six-year-old, didn't have this dreadful trip in the morning, uh, they would have made sure uh, that there was extra provision available in Latchmere. They simply don't understand for a start that parents of primary youngsters do not behave in the same way as parents of secondary youngsters prepared to move across the borough. And frankly, if that is the level of the intellectual debate which we are facing in this chamber, then it's yet another uh, disappointment. The exception, of course, was Wandle in, in Earlsfield, which was the fourth primary we, we, we closed during my patch. And it goes back to the point that Councillor Dawson was saying. Wandle was a one-form entry school, a very effective school. You, of course, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, chaired the governors there very successfully for, for many years. And, uh, that. But nonetheless, at that time, it had fewer than 100 youngsters. And in a school of that size, a very, very significant proportion of the resource is going on non-educational issues. What we did was, we expanded, actually expanded Earlsfield School at the time by half form of entry, then expanded Beatrix Potter by a form of entry, enormously successful school, very popular school. We ended up with a much better educational experience. While, of course, and we mustn't lose sight of this, providing a capital receipt from four sites that we were able to plow back into our schools, meaning that we could improve the buildings without having to go into the dreadfully dishonest private finance initiative whereby the last Labour government managed to hide a vast amount of public debt by not calling it debt, but nonetheless left future generations with a huge uh, sum to have to deal with. Uh, Mr Mayor, 
just as an example of Labour Party strategy on education, this afternoon the cabinet of Knowsley Council, it's a council in, uh, ten, uh, 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 near Liverpool, uh, it consists of 63 Labour councillors and nobody else, and the cabinet voted to close a school locally. Uh, the difference from what the decisions we had to take with this vast amount of wasted resources and Knowsley is that the school in Knowsley, which had cost £24 million to produce, was opened four years ago under private finance initiative, leaving that council and those children with decades of wasted money to have to pay because of what the Labour Party in this country thinks is a strategy on education. Now, Mr Mayor, we never did that in this borough. We have, as I understand, over the last uh, 20 years now, been in consistently in the top three improving education authorities in the country in the only thing that really matters to me, which is educating our children. And it's notable how, how well our children actually do is never in a Labour debate about education. It's all about you're not as good as Lambeth because Lambeth spent 15% more than you do on education. It doesn't matter that many of our schools in the east of the borough are populated by educational refugees from uh, Lambeth, desperate to get away from their schools, as youngsters were desperate to get away from our schools 23 years ago. So, Mr Mayor, if a strategy means having a set of principles and a set of uh, priorities to deliver them, then I'd say to the Labour Party, don't use the word strategy in a, in a motion when you quite patently don't uh, understand it, because nothing I've heard from you either today or indeed over the last 20 years gives me any suggestion that you have any strategy for education whatsoever. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Belton. I remember Councillor Bingle once saying to me, um, one of the disasters of the Tory party policy might be in uh, giving uh, greater freedom for schools. In fact, what they do is uh, nationalize them. Well, actually, of course, with the academies program, just to mention one thing that you talked about, Councillor Dawson, that is effectively nationalization. So, uh, I mean, talk about dogma. Uh, just one or two things from Councillor Dawson, there's just so much dogma, you, you can't keep up with it all. Uh, schools are all right being large because they're run by the private sector. Didn't quite say that was what he meant. I remember not that many years ago when they were too large because they were comprehensive and they must be attacked because they were too large. It just flips depending who's running it. And it's a complete ideological thing about the role of local authorities, as, uh, as Councillor Grimston made all too clear. And by the way, Councillor Grimston was the education speaker who didn't think that uh, providing free school meals was very important because it wasn't about education. Uh, education should be about teaching and learning and didn't even seem to understand that hungry kids were not uh, uh, necessarily the best, uh, best pupils that you could have shows how much he knew about it. Madam Mayor, I can't see how a sensible, non-dogmatic Tory can vote against this motion. It's, uh, it's very, I mean, do you not regret the fact that we're now de decommissioned schools? I mean, we would have made the same mistake, I suspect. Who knows? But way back in 2000, when we were in the middle of this program of closing 10 schools, uh, we were also boasting about having the youngest, best educated workforce in the country. The highest number of 20 to 39 year olds by 10, 15% than any other borough. Now, when you've got a, a mass population of 10 to 39 year olds, uh, we may have been a little bit surprised by the timing of it, but are we totally surprised? I guess I might have been just as surprised too, to be honest. But are we totally surprised? It's a baby boom. And, uh, and we have masses of kids. Of course, looking back on it, it was predictable. But did we plan for it? No, we didn't. We sold off as many sites as we possibly could. I mean, Councillor Grimston mentioned one of them being Joseph Trecken. Now, he's got a point about many of these schools are in the wrong place. But it can't be much wronger than Hillbrook, which is being expanded, because it's very close to Hillbrook. So, you know, that... <laughs> what? Sorry? You don't listen to a you. You don't listen to anything except your own dogma. I said we might have got that... We might have got... We might have got it wrong too. But you cannot 
but regret that both sides got it wrong. And we should have been a little bit more cautious than sell off all the sites. And of course you sold off all the sites because you want to slim down the public sector as far as possible. Take free schools. Now, we're, getting free, we're supporting Oasis to come into uh, uh, Putney. It's going to have 32, it's got 33 schools, I think. That must make it larger than 50% of the local, well, perhaps not 50%, but a considerable number of local authorities in this country. Level of accountability, level of uh, uh, centralized control, pretty great, I suspect. And that's what we've got as a result of your ideological approach. As long as it's private sector, as long as it's not public, unless it's nationalized and Gover's running it, because you know, it's, it's mixed. Part of it is nationalized, and part of it is passed off onto the private sector or the voluntary sector. Madam Mayor, I just cannot conceive that we shouldn't be regretting the, uh, sorry, I've lost the paper somewhere. I cannot conceive that we're not regretting um, the closure. I cannot conceive that we are failing to have <laughs> a bit of trouble here. I cannot conceive that we're not regretting that we're not planning for the future. I cannot even concede that you know, 20 years ago there were standards for, low, for schools. Um, I remember we turned down, I think both sides turned down, a private school in Trinity Road um, about 1985 because of the access actually on the Trinity Road. And then we had a change of uh, plan and we decided it was okay. Now, according to Gove, you can run a free school from a garage. I have to ask Councillor King some point or other, what's his site like in Croydon? Is he running it from, a, uh, from an old warehouse? You don't seem to have any view whatever about the standards that are, are being involved. And that's partly because you've broken down the standards in the public sector. Personally, just to add to this, personally, uh, when talking about the free schools, um, in the world as we know it today, um, fortunately not too bad in this country, though pretty bad in Northern Ireland, I cannot conceive of how we can be supporting faith schools everywhere. I mean, I know for a fact that there are very senior people in this council uh, who are complete, on the other side, who are completely opposed to faith schools. But well, there we are, going ahead with faith schools in this day and age. Madam Mayor, I just do not believe that you can be voting against your own existence as local education authority councillors in quite the way you are. Councillor Nadler. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, last week, I was lucky enough to be able to welcome pupils from across the borough to this chamber for their model United Nations General Assembly. Now, I'm quite sure that every councillor in this chamber would commend that event and the excellent impression it gives of ones with schools. So, I'm genuinely astonished by the tone of Labour's motion that doesn't seem to offer any acknowledgement of the brilliant work that's going on in our schools or the efforts made by the Education Authority. It's almost as though this motion isn't about Wandsworth at all, and perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's actually about the Labour Party and its own internal debate. Not that there isn't an external debate to be had. For instance, Labour's motion says that we should provide every parent in Wandsworth access to a good primary school. Our aim is that every parent in Wandsworth should have access to an outstanding primary school. We are unapologetic about it, and that's, I'm sure, why we're already within the 10 most successful authorities nationally in approaching this goal. Over 90% of Wandsworth primaries are already good or outstanding. So what is Labour up to with this demoralising motion? It's hardly seemly for a party that professes to believe in the role of LEAs. There's no pat on the back here for Wandsworth teams, a team of officers who are leading the way in the evolution of education authorities. Whilst we must never be complacent about those 9% of schools that haven't yet been judged good, reading this motion, you'd think this authority presided over a slew of failing schools rather than providing the strategic vision that has contributed to the steady improvement in standards in the last decade. Could it be that Labour can't bring themselves to acknowledge all of this because it would leave their own inconsistent schools policy totally exposed? Now take academies. I heard Tony Blair on the radio this week and thought, given the febrile state of the Middle East, he'd be better advised to accentuate the positive. Academies, a great idea, Tony, and one which this holy 
non-dogmatic authority has embraced with great success. Pleased to be able to bring new providers to the borough, new ideas and practices channeled towards that overall goal of raising standards in all our schools. Tony Blair got it. It would appear that Councillor Gibbons and his colleagues do not. That said, I don't totally blame them. The confusion of this motion reflects the confusion at the top of their party. If he were ever Secretary of State, Mr Twigg says he won't extend free schools, but he won't close the ones that we've opened either. Instead, he wants to put in his words parent-led and teacher-led academies. Hmm, free schools. free schools. Free schools by any other name. Could it be then that Mr Twigg and perhaps his colleagues here can't quite reconcile their own unease at this innovative grassroots movement, challenging established, established practice as it does, with the evidence that the idea is popular with parents nationally and locally and is working? Lobby the Secretary of State, says Labour. Well, yes, we are, through the though, though to the exact opposite purpose they suggest. And actually... Labour are helping us in that by sitting on Wandsworth Free School Commission, as Councillor Dawson explained. Now, quite simply, the Commission is a brilliant Wandsworth innovation, giving us more influence than other boroughs over the schools that will come here and creating a can-do culture that's actually bringing these schools here. It's a model for the rest of the country. At present, it's a cross-party body supporting academies and free schools coming to Wandsworth, but can we now take it that our Labour colleagues will be reconsidering their membership? Either way, the schools are coming here. They're coming to Roehampton, to Tooting, to Ballam, and to Putney, and elsewhere in the longer term. Why are, they why are they coming? They're coming exactly to respond to the growing demand which Labour refers to. While campaigning last week, a sense of deja vu quickly crept over me as door after door opened with a young, sort of good-looking chap holding a baby to his chest. It was almost like being an Athena poster. Um, and uh, I frankly was wondering whether my male colleagues were, were, were finding good-looking girls in tennis dresses, but that's another matter. Um, the point is that Wandsworth is a fertile borough. There are babies emerging from seemingly every direction. But, you know, were these babies all created here, or was the high incidence of packing cases also another clue? Wandsworth School's population is growing. A higher birth rate, and here's the rub, inward migration to these good and outstanding schools is playing its part. Inevitably, more places are needed, and we are responding in every way except one size fits all. We're expanding the good schools, we're providing new ones through the Academies program, and we're welcoming the free school movement. Why? Because choice, our mantra for a reason, is a dynamic. It's not an end in itself. It's the adjutant, the motor, yes, for bringing new places, but more importantly, for driving up standards in every other school too. Tony Blair gets it, and I'm sure he'd like us to vote against this mean-spirited motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Speck. Right. Well, I will go on to this, but I feel quite uh, upset that the other half doesn't actually understand our motion, because I feel extremely passionate about education. It's what I'm all about, and you've missed the point completely. The, the shortage of primary school places in the place we actually need them is obviously of great concern to all of us, as is providing the best possible learning environments and the best education for all our pupils should also be of great concern to all of us. And not on my notes, but yes, did think it was important to be on the commission to make sure we get the best we can, and you know some of the dogs we've seen as well. Um, we should also remember that it is the pupils and the students who we're there for, and it's their future that's affected if we don't get it right. None of this motion was de denigrating Wandsworth or its education staff because at all levels we have an excellent reputation for providing good and outstanding schools and education in the borough. And it's a real shame that the, education, the government's education policy is putting this pre uh, provision in jeopardy because I really do believe it is. It is against common sense that the main education group, group with a true proven track record in the borough, the council, is not allowed to build the schools or provide the education services it knows it needs in the area it needs them. And it's one of the, that is one of the main cruxes as well. Why can't we build our own schools? That stops com uh, competition, never mind anything else. 
As the motion states, and as an educationalist with a proven track record, I believe we should lobby the Secretary of State for Education to rethink the national policy on free schools, in particular in stopping LAs from opening new schools, as this has led to a free for, for all in applications to open free schools, and often, from what I've seen, people who want to be heads who wouldn't pass the interviews we put them through within the authority to become a head any other way. I certainly wouldn't, and I've done a few interviews in my time. Um, there are millions of pounds going into this project um, of, the, of the Secretary of State, and already some of the free schools and academies have failed their Ofsteds on all levels, from the education to the management. It's not a be-all and end-all. We need to be very careful. I know that the, the council has tried to alleviate the problem of the shortage of the primary schools by expanding more schools. And these, school, these cases have to be taken on an individual basis. Because it isn't just making school bigger. We've got to look at the capability of the schools, not just in space, but in personnel, in management capability, to take on extra pre, uh, pupils, in the effect on the local community. We also need to look at the learning environment and the playgrounds and the sports areas that are being sacrificed. I listened in dismay recently uh, at meetings about using buildings that are not fit for purpose. Office buildings, where are we going to stick the children? If we want to provide the best possible education, the best chances for our pupils, we have to provide the right environment and the right expertise. And actually I'm fighting for edu our education and our people here, not against them. Another reason uh, for, uh, for uh, lobbying the uh, Secretary of State is why can't we open our own new schools in areas we need them? Why can't we be provided with the money going to free schools that want to do that when we have the proven track record? It is not freedom choice for our parents and pupils, and we've seen in some other boroughs where parents don't want them and get them. If I wanted to expand, those are all the sorts of things I'd have to do. I'd have to provide, as a head teacher, I always had to ensure I had the best education, the best teachers, the best support, the best environment, the best support from LAs, and the community, and making sure our pupils wanted to learn. We have some excellent schools and some excellent heads. I mean, I'm chair of governors at Chesterton. I'm really proud of Chesterton. It's an outstanding school in the most deprived ward in the, in the borough. It's a teaching school. It's, doing, it's supporting schools in the borough and out of the borough. And if we need more primary schools, for, like in Nine Elms, why do we have to get somebody else to run them? Why can't we have those people doing it there? He's, the Secretary of State is destroying the ability of the local LA to provide the strategic role. I'm That's bad at names. I'll, I'll, I'll wind up very quickly. Strategic... When I were ahead, you didn't just have a school improvement plan that lasts one year, one year or two. You had a strategic plan planning for the future. We need to be more strategic, and I'll leave the, the, less, but the rest here, but we need to be more strategic about what we really want. We need our vision. We need, and I'm about Spec. education. I'm in dog, Maria, Aaron, and everywhere. Thank You're you tossing it all Spec. over the place. We need to lobby to make sure our kids have the best education and we can provide it. Thank you. Councillor Tracy, and then Councillor Osborne. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, a very interesting debate so far, I must say. Um, but the most wonderful example of Labour trying to turn back the clock. I mean, you know, we've heard of, in various forums, haven't we, over the last couple of weeks, that Labour want to go backwards, and this really is going backwards. I entered local government because of the Labour administration in Ilia being, a, being unable to strategically provide pupil places. Um, at the time I became an Ilia member, there were over 40% of empty places across London, but only 40% of the population of Tower Hamlets who required places had them, because the Labour administration just would not close schools. It kept its schools open for the staff and for the unions, not for the pupils. And that is what we've changed in Wandsworth. I mean, I also, I just can't get my head around what, um, you know, particularly Councillor Speck said. Um, why shouldn't a local authority be able to open schools in the areas where the schools are needed? From that, you must follow that local authorities have to be able to 
close schools in areas where those places are not needed, which is exactly uh, what we did do um, in the early 90s. Um, of the schools we closed, seven were in areas where we still have um, uh, places today. Um, Councillor Belton, um, who I think has left, talked about uh, Joseph Tritton being near Hillbrook, um, and <laughs> one is in Tooting and one is in Battersea. I don't know what he was talking about. Um, the, the interesting statistic that hasn't come out yet, and I feel it is worth actually um, mentioning it, is because um, the Labour Party are saying that we, we didn't plan. Actually, we planned very carefully then, as we do now. In those areas where we know there, are, um, there is an ongoing need, we made provisions in those schools to either hire them out to um, other providers, uh, nursery schools, uh, you know, the Wick school was formed by the French Lycée moving in, the French Lycée moved into a couple of other places. Um, but we actually kept the space, and Hillbrook is a wonderful example of that, where um, parts of the building had been hired out, and now we've taken it back in. West Hill School is another example of that, where we had another private school operating on two floors. We now need the places so it can expand. But the interesting thing about the birth rate, um, which couldn't have been foreseen um, in the 90s, is that over 90% of our increase in the birth rate of those live births of children we are providing places for now come from families that have not been born in England or Wales. So it is... I mean, those are, maybe Scotland, I, but I mean, those are staggering figures, staggering figures. So it isn't the 30-year-olds um, uh, that uh, Councillor Belton was talking about, um, and we should have known better. These are families that have come to Wandsworth um, and are now, because of what we are able to offer in this borough, and because of the excellent education we can offer, are making their homes here. Um, and particularly um, the Polish community are actually settling down, taking citizenship, I'm pleased to say, um, and starting families. Um, it is a very stark statistic, and it's one before this um, debate I didn't know myself. So um, I thank the Labour Party for that because I think it's very interesting to see it. Um, I would like to just make a, a quick comment about um, uh, why we don't share the Labour Party's view on um, being the only people that can provide education. And we have never thought that in uh, Wandsworth. Um, and in a way, I'm surprised they do, because you know, 20 years ago, they thought the only people that could provide education was London-wide, and that was the ILEA. Uh, no borough, no London borough, at all, anywhere, would um, say that it would be better to turn the clock back and go back to those days. We are now just going down a step further um, for devolution. And those schools that are outstanding, and uh, Councillor Speck um, very proudly mentioned Chesterton, which of course is one of our very outstanding schools, um, and said, why can't um, the same people that run that school run our schools. Well, of course, that is exactly what the policy is all about. If Chesterton wanted, in fact, to run the school in Nine Elms, and we as an authority, I think, would probably welcome that, they could do exactly that. They could become an academy, and they could apply to run that school. Um, the, all our secondary schools, bar one, are actually clamoring um, to um, run one of the free schools in the borough. Um, three of them have contacted me just this week when they've seen the paper about Atheldean to say, could we actually, would you consider us running this school? Um, there's been some comments about school expansion and um, those colleagues who were at the Education and Standards Committee um, last week, uh, let me remind them that both schools that came said, please, can we expand? When are you going to ask us to expand to? So it isn't, um, uh, I mean, it's just extraordinary that the Labour Party can't move with what has happened in Wandsworth because the evolution of education really has been 
incredibly satisfying, incredibly good. 92% of our schools are now good and outstanding. I mean, that is just phenomenal. Our buildings are in a better condition than most other education authorities in the country. And that is because we, we managed to close some schools and reinvest the capital from those schools in the fabric. So I so totally reject this motion and I just cannot believe that um, for those colleagues in the Labour Party that have sat on the committee with me, that they don't want to join us in the journey, that they want to turn back the clock. Councillor Osborne. Yeah, it is indeed a, an interesting debate in lots of different ways. Um, if we look at uh, the various debates actually we've had tonight with all their various literary illu illusions and, and so on, uh, I'm struck by how different this debate is to the first one. We all agreed that Nine Elms, uh, that, about the Nine Elms development. Um, I, I do wonder why we have resolutions on it and a debate on such a thing uh, in a place like this where I think it's much more important to do what we're doing now and get to grips with real differences about how we should be operating in a, a, a bar, as a borough rather than deal with areas where we broadly agree. We end up with uh, what I suppose is Councillor Govindia's style of leadership. It's always the bland leading the bland and that's what all these debates are about. Instead of a proper, a proper debate about differences of opinion which we're, we're trying to have now. A major bit about what's going on in education in this, this borough has been left out tonight in this discussion. I've raised two kids in this borough. Both of them went to Wandsworth schools, primary school and secondary school. One's still at the secondary school. And I know what it's like for a Wandsworth parent worrying about getting kids into a school. And that is what is at the heart of our resolution and has hardly been touched on by the majority party tonight. Out there you there is stress an and there is no. Out there there is stress and there I is want anguish. To give you the figures. It, there is stress and there is anguish about getting kids into a school near to where you live. And it is that that must be recognised and that that must be de dealt with. And people are looking at the figures and saying it's getting worse. It's going to be worse in 2016, 2017 and all the evidence backs them up as it happens. Let's put Wandsworth in context. In, it, it, it's a London phenomenon, of course it is. There's a problem with urban drift. It's a problem our city has had for about 2,000 years, actually. Extra people moving in all the time and having to cope with it. There's a problem about standards. Actually, interestingly, as they went through, Councillor Dawson spoke about free schools as though Councillor uh, uh, Gibbons had not said that we'd supported one of them. He just completely ignored it and painted this ideological picture, just as Councillor Belton says, and, and opposed us in that sense. Councillor Grimston talked about uh, the, uh, how he had to deal with uh, schools where, which were half empty. Well, of course, and of course, lots of boroughs, Labour and Conservative all over London, have been faced with that, and they dealt with it at the time. They scaled back the places in the schools. They were supposed to do so. Councillor Belton made it clear we, in, we did support it in some cases, and we would have done. Both interventions are missing the point of our resolution. And, and actually, interestingly, the, uh, the two contributions from uh, Councillor Nadler and um, from the Cabinet member, um, from Councillor Tracy, did deal with this thing about standards attracting pupils into the borough. And that's one of the things that's happening across London, actually. You have people moving into London because they come here for the standards in the schools. You have people, I know one of my kids went to school with a boy who commuted from Southampton to go to school uh, in Wandsworth. Uh, you have people attracted by that. It's the new version of the streets are paved with gold. There are schools in London that people want to get their kids into. London has had the baby boom, much more than any other part of the country. The recession has caused people in London to say, let's, uh, let's 
stay put for a bit and have our kids here. Uh, it's caused people to say, well, we might forego the private sector for a bit. All sorts of factors are driving up school place, school occupation in the, uh, in the city. But all of those factors are writ large in Wandsworth. Wandsworth is special. Wandsworth is special in two key ways. It's got all of that more than almost any other part of London. And in fact, if you th I think if you look at the figures, the combination makes Wandsworth unique. It's a problem in Wandsworth in a way in which it isn't anywhere else because of all of those. But there's something else going on in Wandsworth as well. While we were scaling back, we were doing something else. Part of the strategy was also to look at the budgets and to look at a way of constantly generating income and too many of those school sites have been sold off. Too many of them have been gotten rid of completely. We choked off every opportunity for us to have flexibility in the future because we sold. And that approach to the sites has collided with this new factor which we now face in this borough. And I can take you to the very spot where the two mistakes collide. If you come right to the centre of my ward, in Graveney Ward, in Franciscan Road, we have a perfectly purpose-built school with a lovely large playground in the back which has been turned into a free school and would provide the places which local people want. But at the same time, we are hell-bent on selling off space all the time. And what have we done? We've sold off the playground. We've sold off the playground for uh, 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 sheltered accommodation for the elderly. So now the playground is too small. There isn't enough room for the kids in the back of that school. Right on that very spot, strategic errors of the first order that have been made in this borough collide. And the people who are going to pay? Those parents. Those parents that are now worried about whether or not they're going to get their kids in or not in 2016, 2017, 2018. That's what we need to be focused on. And all we've done in our resolution is to say, let's have a look at it. I know you don't want to hear it, but let's just have a look at what we said in our resolution. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a reassessment for the sake of those parents and for the sake of their kids. I urge you all to support this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, councillors. The matter now before the council is the motion on the agenda concerning primary school places proposed by Councillor Osborne and seconded by Councillor Gibbons. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Those against the motion. Thirteen for, thirty-six against. But I, and the motion is lost. Okay. So, so now we actually uh, we are now returning to the executive report number two. Can the council note that paragraph seven of this report was discussed at the special education and children's services OSC meeting on the fourth of June and not the ordinary meeting held on the twentieth of June. Adult Care and Health, Councillor Madden, Paragraph 1. Over to you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, paragraph 1 is for information. Is that agreed? Paragraph 2 is for information. Yes. Can we take the same numbers? Paragraph 3 is for information. Agreed. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Councillor. Mayor. Environment, Culture and Community Safety, Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 4 is for information. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor uh, Ellis, Housing. Uh, Madam Mayor, paragraph 5 is for information. Paragraph 6 is for agreed. information. And paragraph 6 is agreed. Okay. Education, Children's Services, Councillor Tracy. Paragraph 7. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Paragraph 7 is the, extent, it is the expansion of six primary school places. And I would just like to point out to colleagues that 
um, all my colleagues can reassure their residents that there will be places for all primary school children in the years 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 20. The paper is for information. It's late, it's late. Is this for information? Is, is this agreed? Yes, it's agreed. Paragraph 7 is agreed. Right. Yes, thank you. Paragraph 8 is for information. Same numbers? And paragraph 9 is for information. Thank you. Same numbers? You're abstaining? Okay. Yeah? Abstaining, right. Um, we now move to strategy planning and transportation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph 10 is for information. Agreed. And paragraph 11 is for information. Agreed. Finance corporate resources, Councillor Senior. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph 13 is for information. Agreed. Yes. Against. Same numbers? Yeah. Four and against. Paragraph 14 is for information. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Graham, Planning Application Committee number three. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, paragraph one is for information. Is that agreed? Paragraph two is for information, as agreed. is paragraph three. Both agreed. Planning application report number four, Councillor Graham. Um, thank you again. Paragraph one is for information. Is that agreed? Paragraph two is for information. Agreed. And paragraph three is likewise for information. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, health and wellbeing, Councillor Madden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paragraph 1 of item 14 is for information. Agreed. General purposes. Councillor Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, paragraph 1 is for information. Agreed. Agreed. Item 16, committee uh, memberships, is the recommendation set out on this report approved. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, councillors. Thank you for, um, and that concludes.